refreshed model 3 demand is off of the charts tesla is starting to advertise more than ever before if this demand continues 2024 could be a very good year for tesla stock investors and one strategist believes markets could hit a new all-time high by the end of this year so despite some of the bearish things that have been happening in our markets there could be a bright side to all of it in the near-term future tesla's website in china crashed for multiple users when they tried to place an order for a tesla model 3 highland this is presumably because Tesla is seeing a lot of web traffic, a problem we have seldomly had in the past, even during very good times for Tesla. So this is not really a problem you want to see, but it's a good sign that we have a good problem. I would much rather see Tesla's website shutting down because of so much demand rather than not being visited. Speaking of great demand and traffic for Tesla, France, Italy, Spain, Portugal, Austria, and Romania already look like we're going to see a new record quarter for sales of Tesla. And basically all of these charts you will look at, you're seeing a pretty big ramp in all of them. Now, this does not matter in the grand scope of Tesla's delivery numbers. China is what is very important. And when you look at the chart for China, look at this. So you just have to see a good third month of Q3. And you're going to be at least matching, if not slightly exceeding, Tesla's largest delivery number in a quarter ever for china we know china is roughly 35 to 40 percent of tesla's deliveries every quarter so just being at 88,000 vehicles delivered during the second month of q3 is a very good sign that we're at least going to see good numbers wall street is not expecting good numbers you can see that by Tesla stock following last earnings. Tesla's share price is still down 18% from back here on July 19th. Yet, we're getting so much good news. This ultimately is to your benefit. As Wall Street is delusional, you can profit from it. To exactly that point, take a look at what the analysts have rated Tesla over the last couple of months three months ago the consensus for tesla was a moderate buy at 3.72 out of five five would be a strong buy two months ago you were at 3.46 one month ago you were at 3.35 and today you're at 3.35 three months ago on the ratings well you had 10 strong buys and now you have seven strong buys you had two moderate buys, and today you have one moderate buy. You had 11 holds, now you have 16 holds. Three months ago, you had two strong sells, and today you have three strong sales. Sells. This is not a stock that's priced for good things. I have said this before, and I will say it again. Tesla is very much already priced for a recession in terms of Wall Street's estimates. Wall Street is expecting 27% delivery growth next year in a year in which the refreshed Model 3 hopefully comes online in big numbers in the US, China, and in Europe, as well as the Cybertruck, two essentially new vehicles being launched, and you're expecting 27% delivery growth. That has to be factoring in or pricing in a recession, right? We've never seen 27% delivery growth in Tesla's publicly traded history dating back to 2010. During 2010, Tesla had 600% delivery growth. These numbers make no sense. But again, that is to your benefit. When Wall Street is delusional, you profit. 
Tesla has now started running 67 ads on Google. And what they're advertising now is, in my opinion, a better way to advertise. And I'm going to highlight this more throughout this video. But the things that Tesla is saying makes a lot more sense to me. And if I was someone that owned a internal combustion engine, I would look at some of these advertisements and be a little bit more curious and want to find out more. Here's one. Starting at $32,740. Charge at home or on the road. Autopilot comes standard starting at $32,740. Utility meets comfort starting at $40,240. Tesla Model Y, $7,500 federal tax credit. Schedule a demo drive today. No annual maintenance required, starting at 40240 This is different from the first initial advertisements we've seen from Tesla. But ultimately, I think Tesla needs to advertise on the TV. Those are the people that have probably never experienced a Tesla firsthand, that don't know much about a Tesla, and it's going to fit your demographics more. Let's be honest, a lot of older people watch the TV, which is kind of the demographic that buys Teslas now. You know how many Polestar ads I have seen on TV? It's actually ridiculous. Every day or two, I'll see a Polestar ad. I think that's a good way for Tesla to advertise. Eventually, that will come, and I think that's where advertisement really gets its best ROI with Tesla. Tesla's Google Trend data for the Model 3 also remains strong, but I want to highlight what I just said. A lot of the search demand is coming from California. Look at my state of Michigan. You're 24 out of 100. Look at Ohio at 21. Indiana at 18, Kentucky at 19, Tennessee at 21. There's just not enough people that are familiar with Tesla. And I think that is a solvable problem. It's not a problem that is unsolvable. It will happen. Just how much time does it take? And does Tesla advertise to the right demographic of individuals to speed that process up? Over the past 12 months, Tesla in Google Trends has also remained a pretty hot topic. Back here in 2022, Google Trends data was in the high 60s to low 60s for a majority of 2022. And basically all of 2023, you have been in the 70s, 80s, or 90s. Currently, you're at 77. So a little bit more interest than what we've seen in 2022. Tesla Australia cancels orders for the Model 3 performance on the launch of Highland. This is from Drive Tesla in Canada. Tesla finally launched the Project Highland at Model 3 this week, but conspicuously absent from the release was the performance model. Tesla did not explain why only the rear wheel drive and long range variants were launched. But Model 3 performance reservation holders in Australia are waiting for clarity as the EV maker has cancelled its existing orders for the top of the line model. It is estimated that the Model 3's refreshed performance version will be coming to markets within the next month or two. So we will see what happens. Tesla has also added a new safety feature to the refreshed Model 3. It now has an extra latch at the bottom of the door to improve occupant safety in the event of side impact. And Alex on Twitter says safety is always paramount at Tesla. Now, I really like this post from James Cat on Twitter. He says, despite the aggressive price cuts in 2023 and three ramping factories, Texas, Berlin, and Lathrop, Tesla is still incredibly growing revenues faster than they are growing operating expenses. This is very strong cost management on display. The table and chart contain the same info presented two ways. 
So when you look at this chart, you're looking at revenues right here at this top line. And in 2017, Tesla had revenues of almost 12 billion. Well, SGNA expenses were almost two and a half billion. This was over 30%, almost 32% of Tesla's total revenue. Well, look at it now. 8.23% of Tesla's total revenue. But when you actually look at the R&D expense, which R&D is research and development, it's basically you're investing in the business, you're at a higher R&D expense than you have basically ever been at, considering this data is for the first half of 2023 only being at 1.7 billion meaning on an annualized basis you're going to come in well over 3 billion beating 2022's all-time high for R&D expense of 3.075 billion yet Tesla's spending less of its overall revenues to invest more in the business so exactly to James Katz's point. Tesla has become a very efficient machine and these increased profits based on growing revenues really allow Tesla to do this and, and be self-sufficient. Tesla, unlike Ford, GM, or other automakers, they will be able to expand almost infinitely based on their profit margins back into the business without running out of capital if ford or gm's losses continue at this pace and legacy oems have a tough year next year ford and gm are not going to be in a great financial position all things considered look at the uaw contract that's also not great it makes it even harder to compete with tesla if you're confused what sgna actually stands for stands for selling general and administrative expenses these would include salaries wages benefits for executives and staff not directly involved in manufacturing or other production tasks rent utilities insurance payments marketing advertising and promotion expenses accounting costs legal costs office supplies things of that nature so you want to see these numbers as low as possible and tesla is succeeding at just that bmw has just launched the new class i think that's how you say it it's right here provide maybe a little bit of context in the comment section i have no idea how to say that new class is what it looks like to me but this is your tesla copycat 101 it looks just like a Tesla with a sideways steering wheel to me. Even down to the in-dash tablet, the structure of the seats, the structure of the center console. Complete Tesla copycat. Look at the glass roof. Like, it really doesn't get more similar to a Tesla than this. This is going to launch by the end of 2025 supposedly and you already know what wall street is going to say this is another tesla killer we've seen these things come and go new cars are said to launch they get delayed and demand never materializes i have said it for a very long time tesla is a brand I strongly believe, and one of the top reasons why I invest in Tesla personally, it's not because the Model Y is the most successful vehicle that we have seen in recent times. It's not because the Cybertruck is launching. It's not even because of FSD. I like to invest in brands. Tesla could sell phones. They could sell clothes. They could sell whatever the hell they wanted. And Tesla as a brand will be successful kind of like an apple apple can sell whatever they want and people will buy it because they love the apple brand same is true with tesla and we are only in the early stages of what the tesla brand will look like when you look out 5 10 15 20 years we're the early adopters still for tesla this is like buying an iphone in 08 where we currently are with tesla as far as a brand 
So yeah, any pullback or any dip that we shall get in the next month or two, I am buying the hell out of it. Every dollar I possibly can. The lower the better. So I encourage the steepest drop possible. But according to this strategist, a drop, not what we're going to get. Let's give it a listen. Slightly mixed to kick off what's a typically weak stretch for the market, but our next guest says history suggests the current setup bodes well for a return to all-time highs by year's end. Let's bring in Carson Group Chief Market Strategist Ryan Dietrich. Ryan, good to catch up with you. We were here uh, the 1st of August, so a month ago. Uh, you had been bullish. You mentioned that uh, maybe August was going to be a little bit bumpy. What is uh, the tendencies and the market behavior itself telling you about what we might expect in September? Yeah, Mike, I'm happy one month since we got to talk. You're right. It was August 1st, and we talked about then the idea of up 17.5% for the year. Historically, August, Mike, had been down the last four times. So maybe it was time for some bumpiness. Well, this was the fifth time. But here's the kicker, Mike. When you're up 17.5%, again, the first seven months of the year, August usually bad, September, this terrible month we've been hearing about, is actually higher the last four times with some really good returns. One more on this, when you're up 10% for the year and down in August, like we are right now, getting into September, the S&P has been higher eight out of 10 times with some really strong returns. We're not ignoring the seasonal weakness. We are saying, you know what, there's a setup. Maybe we can have a surprise September rally when no one expects it. Right, and it definitely seems as if a strong start to the year does change the equation on uh, what might be to come. That being said, aside from the seasonal patterns, uh, what are you seeing in the market setup right now uh, that makes you lean one way or another about how the year might finish? Yeah, well, obviously, we've been overweight equities all year. Right? People didn't like that call beginning of the year. They've come on a little bit. I'll tell you what, Mike, what, what I like is just look at like the internals, right? Advanced decline lines, the advanced decline line on the S&P 500. It's really strong. It's not that far away from an all-time high. So you hear about the Magnificent Seven, things like that. There really are a lot of stocks participating. The other thing, kind of the second part to this, I love to look at the credit markets, right? Look at triple B spreads. Look at high yield, drastically outperforming treasuries and investment grade. Keep this simple. If there's a monster under the bed, we would see more stress in credit markets. We had that 5% correction you know, last month, I guess, now technically. We said the whole time it probably wouldn't be much more than that because the credit markets and the internals were both pretty strong. Just a little seasonal weakness, perfectly normal. Now we think that upward bias is back. It is true. Credit markets never really sounded any alarms, although the absolute level of Treasury yield seems like it has acted as a little bit of a restraint on uh, stocks. Once it gets to a certain level, how might that go from here? I mean, I'm of, of the view that the market can make its peace with uh, different higher levels of yields if it's for the right reasons. But how does it play for you? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. I mean, w our opinion, the yields went higher last month because the economic data continue to get better. But I'll tell you, everybody kind of got on one side. Now you've got this economic data, this softening. I know you guys have talked about it all day. We're seeing some softening. Now yields, I don't know if yields have peaked for the year, but I think they drastically aren't going to keep going up as much as they were. And that can, like you said, kind of give the markets its, market its peace and let it um, kind of continue to rally. And let's not forget, though, September, October can be a little rough. But again, later in a pre-election year, November, December are really strong so we still think new highs are quite likely mike when all is said and done what parts of the market seem like they're standing out to you at this point yeah, we, we've liked cyclicals and value, uh, cyclical value a lot. I mean, energy, no one's really talking about energy. I think I talked to this a month ago. Energy is where it was like in 2008, Mike, okay? But yet, energy all of a sudden is outperforming. So there's a lot of potential upside to energy here. We also like small caps. I know they haven't done as well last month. Look at how they're doing today. Small caps doing well. So if there's no recession, we think small caps and, again, those cyclicals, energy, industrials, materials, maybe a bit of financials will probably be the areas to lead, I guess we'll say the rest of this year all right ryan appreciate it we'll hold you to it catch up with you again soon thank you as you may have seen tesla's stock was down five percent on friday but tesla options were almost neutral like exactly neutral 49 percent positive order value meaning out of a hundred dollar bill going into tesla options 49 dollars of of which were buying calls or selling puts $51 was buying puts or selling calls. This is not very reflective 
of a 5% down move that we've seen in Tesla stock on Friday. So it looks like to me, algorithms really got control of Tesla stock because Tesla cut prices about 20% on the Model S as well as the Model X as well as cut the price of full self-driving from $15,000 down to $12,000. But they failed to realize or even have priced into their models. Tesla actually raised prices on the Model 3 by 12% in China and 8% on average around the world. Who knows what the U.S. pricing is going to be? I imagine somewhere in line with China, probably 10% higher. If it's lower, then maybe... The U.S. economy is not doing as well as some of the bulls might think. But either way you put it, this is a net positive to margins. So this is exactly what you should want if you're a Tesla investor. Now, Tesla stock does have some very important levels to the downside, which are coming up. $240 per share, that's a big one. On the upside, 265 is also a big one. Roughly where we were trading at on Thursday. On Thursday, you hit a high of $261 per share. On Friday, you hit a low of $242 per share. So you're in a very tight range. If you fall under 240, next stop could be 225. But let me give you my summary of expectations for Tesla over the next month or two in about 45 seconds. Long story short, I can make a whole video on this, but long story short, Tesla stock is going to do what the markets do, but it's going to do it to a more extreme degree. If the markets have another seasonally weak September, well, Tesla's also going to have a weak September and likely weaker than the broader markets. To the contrary, if the markets rally, Tesla stock's going to rally more than the markets. And odds are at some point the markets realize that this was actually great news and actually buy the stock and likely fill this little 5% gap that we ultimately seen. Now, if things get really bad in the economy and data just continues to, to support a slowdown, that's not going to be great. And if Tesla stock does fall, I want to be a, a buyer of any weakness in Tesla. So once we get closer to the Cybertruck actually being delivered to customers, that's the point in which you really don't even need to hedge out your portfolios in Tesla. Obviously, that's not financial advice. Every situation is going to be different. Don't listen to what I say. But at that point, I expect a lot more bullishness for Tesla stock. Tesla is jumping into a new category they have not been in. The best-selling vehicles in the U.S. last year, the top four, were all trucks. Tesla's jumping into that head first. Well, probably going to be a good payoff for Tesla. And you're probably going to get a lot of demand. It's probably going to be that halo effect on Tesla's franchise. So estimates are far too low heading into 2024, in my opinion, to even hedge out your Tesla position. Odds are Tesla is going to be well above 27% delivery growth and well above 29% EPS growth. Now, if you guys want to come hedge out your portfolios, at least in the near term or any time that is fit to do so, if you guys would like to come trade with me as well as other traders live in real time, I do post my trades. A lot of people post theirs as well. Link down below in the description of this video. If you're listening to my voice, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Most importantly, my name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you in the next one.